and life. Yep. Hello, Eva, and welcome to Are You on Able Entertainment? It's another day, and today we'll be talking about modern slavery of Africans living abroad in different parts of the world, especially Middle East. So we're welcoming you guys. Um, Christiana Moke, hello, how are you? Jay Sams, 89, hey. Hey. <laughs> Binta Kamara, hello there, hello, how are you doing? Okay, so I will be joining me right now. Hello, guys. Hello, Ayo. Hi. Emma, Welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. So, welcome to another live um, show. We did one yesterday and two days ago where we're talking about very hot topics. If you've not watched it, I'll advise you to go and check it out on our channel. Today, we'll be talking about modern day slavery of Africans abroad. Yes. And I want to start by from the scratch. When we talk about slavery, we know Africa experienced slavery. And the one we usually talk about is the transatlantic slavery by the Europeans, which started from 16th century to 19th century. But a lot of people don't talk about the Arab slave trade which is also known as the Trans-Sahara slave trade. And this had started since 17th century. Imagine how many centuries before the European slave trade, from 17th century until 1960. And even 1960 is not the official end date because till today, there are still modern day slaves in different parts of the world, especially in the Middle East. So why are we not talking about this? The Arabic slave trade was centered for East Africans, while the transatlantic slave trade was for West Africans. And I'm going to be expatiating more on the Arab slave trade. The Arab slave trade started in 7th century, and they were taking East Africans to different parts of the Arabian Peninsula to work as maids, to work as cooks, to work as domestic servants, to work as shopkeepers. And the beautiful ones amongst them, they served as mistresses for their masters. Some of them even gave birth in the process. So this is just a brief history about the Arabic slave trade. Ayo. <laughs> okay, so yes, um, we're talking today, like Eva said, about, you know, modern day slavery. We're talking about um, a very recent post, actually. So just a few days ago, there was this um, image that went viral about a Nigerian lady's passport, which was put up on a buy and sell platform. I mean, a buy and sell platform where they sell like shoes, like clothes, and a human being, and a human being was put up on that same platform for lease, for sale. That has sparked up a lot of reaction from the general public. And of course, as blacks, as black um, women, we feel like we have to talk about this because it is not funny anymore right now in our day to day there's slavery slavery all around us but out of sight it is out of sight because a lot of these people in bondage in slavery look like the any other person just working the only difference is that they are under pressure they are doing it out of their own will they they are promised for example someone leaves nigeria they are promised that, oh, if you come to Dubai, for example, if you come to Le Lebanon, for example, if you come to Libya, for example, we're going to give you a nice job. Once they get there, they take their passports and force them to work without giving them pay. Mm -hmm. Because people need to understand what 
we mean by modern day slavery. This time, it's not as if people don't actually have um, their consent is not actually um, gone after. Like people actually ask, okay, I want you to come and walk, but they are being lied to. That is the difference. They feel that they are going to work, but eventually it is a lie. They are going to work for people and not get paid for what they're doing. Most of the time, they work extra the time supposed to work for. Someone is asking that, where are you streaming from? Are you streaming from Lagos and I'm streaming from Poland? Guys, let us know in the comment section, where are you watching from? So as Aya was saying, she said that um, these people are being lied to and being told that they'll be given good jobs and blah, blah, and blah, blah. Now, how does the process work? Let me explain the process. You, several people, right, right now there are over 3 million African modern slaves in different parts of the Middle East. Of course, yeah. And these countries have their recruiting agents in different parts of Africa. And because of the poverty situation of Africans, we're always looking for a better livelihood, which is normal. This is human. Everyone, everyone wants a better life. Everyone wants a good life. And because of that, they fall in the hands of these recruitment agencies who promise to give them good jobs make them travel abroad and get money to send back to their families. And after they are being lied to, they go to these countries and on entrance to these countries, their passports and their phones are being seized. That is, they lost communication yes. with the outer world and they cannot leave the country also. Now, let me explain something to you called the kafala system. The kafala system is a system in Middle Eastern countries whereby migrant laborers are linked to their workers. Your passport, your residence permit, your whole life in that country is linked to your worker. You cannot leave that country without the knowledge of your worker. And people have been calling for the abolishment of this kafala system. Exactly. Because this, is what is exactly. causing, this is what is causing the modern day slavery. I know you were talking about the Lebanese guy that um, advertised a Nigerian um, lady. Yeah. Presently, yeah. they say that he has been arrested. Arrested. Mm -hmm. They say he has been arrested. How do we know he's arrested? Let me quickly give you a. Uh, oh. I'm watching from Italy. Hello. <laughs> Let me quickly give um, tell you about a story, a real life story that happened in 2016. A Kenyan girl called Mary was working in Jordan as a maid, working for about 18 hours per day with little or no pay. She was a mother of four children and had a husband. And because mm -hmm. of the economical situation, she went to Jordan to work as a maid so that she can send money back to her family. So there was a day where there was a gas explosion in the kitchen and she was burning. She called out for help to her um, work, to her employers and the lady came into the kitchen and started kicking her causing more physical injury to her and did not help her at all mm -hmm. after her case got so worse she was sent to the hospital in Amman which is the capital of Jordan she was sent to the hospital there for days while she was at the hospital her employers lied to her husband back in Kenya that his wife had a minor accident and that she will get better soon. When they noticed that she wasn't getting better, they sent her back to Kenya, not even with her passport. And when she got to Kenya, she died. Hmm. 
Now, this case was raised internationally. And in Jordan, there was a legal case that was opened against the family. You know, till today, the family, the identity of the family is still hidden. What does this mean? This means that a lot of other women are still going to be employed by these employers. When the case, when the court case was opened in Le in Jordan um, against this family, after a while, the judge ruled out the case, saying that Mary's death was faith, was destiny. Can you imagine? So when you compare that, and, mm -hmm. and Mary's case is just one out of a thousand cases. There are a lot of unheard Definitely. stories. A lot of unheard stories. Because a lot of a lot of these women, these maids, are dying every time. Most of them are dying from suicide. They are trying to run away, jump from the window, and they're dying. So there are a lot of unheard stories. This is just one of them. So when you compare this case to that of the present one that is happening, the Lebanese guy that they said he's being he's being arrested. Okay, even if he's been arrested, how sure are we that they will prosecute him? This is something that he's not the only one doing it. This is not the first time it's happening. That's this is true. a normal system there. That's true. I mean, it's just really disheartening, honestly, because you just wonder why a government would actually can you hear me properly yes i can like you just wonder why a country would actually have an organized system of, of enslaving people because if they're calling for an ab abolishment of that um system of getting people to come and work. That means it is something they have been into for years and years and years. And somehow it benefits their, their economy because it is cheap labor. Mm -hmm. It is cheap labor. So it's pure wickedness for this kind of things to go on and nothing is being done about it. Because in this case, it is the Africans going there to their country and they have a stronger say in their own country. So it will be very difficult for, like you said, um, sorry about Mary's family and stuff like that to Kenyans watching, but it will be very difficult to have Kenya fight on her behalf because it is not within their jurisdiction. It happened in another other country where they feel that they are better than Africans. But you know, yes, um, I'm really sending my so my apologies to Kenyans watching. But in 2016, no, in 2012, the Kenyan government placed a law banning. Kenyan girls from going to Middle Eastern countries to work as domestic maids. Okay. Okay, cool. In 2017, that law was abolished. Hmm. And afterwards, Kenya signed several deals with Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, and Jordan. Hmm. Now, what this brings me to say that as much as I, are you there? Okay. Yes. This is to say that as much as we want this to stop, the little steps that African leaders can take, they are not taking it or they're revoking it. And this brings us back to the point of slavery also. When slavery happened, the, the, the past slavery, how were Africans sold to white people? Who sold them? Our leaders. Our, our, leaders. our leaders. Just a few slaves were captured. Most sure. of them, most of the slaves were sold sure. by African leaders. 
So you can see that this is just a cycle. It just keeps repeating yeah. itself. It happens years ago, centuries ago, and it's still happening today. Honestly, um, our government has a lot to do, a whole lot to do, because there are a lot of human rights activists in Nigeria, a lot of NGOs, you know, that advocate, you know, for against human trafficking, because this, most of this, um, modern day slavery thing has to do with a lot of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. I think it is partly, okay, they might know about it and being lied to, but again, a lot is about human trafficking. An auntie in, in her, in, in Lagos would say, oh, my sister or my friend in the village, bring your child, I will take your child to school. Just bring your child, I'll take the child to school. And they know that when they take that child, I'm speaking in respect of leaders now. Sometimes um, the problem is not even just leaders. Even to the grassroots, you have very wicked people who would do anything for money. So we should also challenge our neighbors. We should also challenge people around us to do better, to know better. Now the auntie, for example, says, oh, come to the city. I'll take care of you. I'll take you to a nice school. You know, you would understand how to speak English and all of this. The mother is happy. The mother is like, oh my goodness, you're going to do this for my family. You're going to make my, my family independent, money-wise. They give away that child, believing. Who they might oh my God, God. Who they? <laughs> Welcome, thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're talking about okay, more. So, um, this this auntie, mm -hmm. yes, you were talking about people that are even close to us, close to our surroundings. If you remember very well, in Nigeria, exactly in Nigeria, there are some people that go to these villages and talk to families and tell them to hand over their girls that i will take care of your girl child i would give her work i would take her to school i would sponsor her and they pay the families sure. Sure. and then they take these girls abroad especially to italy it's very very common in italy they take them to italy and other countries and these girls work as prostitutes yes. Yes. Basically, and, for, I'm sorry to say, but from Edo State in Nigeria, they do Nigeria. that a lot. Real. They take them to and Italy. they know. And they know. They yes, they take them to Italy and they have to work hours as prostitutes. As prostitutes. And it's almost impossible for them to run away because, of course, they take their passports also. Make them dependent on them make their lives dependent on them. They take their residence permits also. And they literally just make them handicapped. And then you have to pay them. They tell you that, oh, I spent 4,000 euros to bring you from Nigeria to Italy. So you have to work and sleep with so, so many guys in one day to pay back the money. To be able... And sure. you cannot be free until you pay her all that money. And this is the reality yes. that is happening in Italy and a lot of other countries. So you can see that Africans, we have to buy the agents first. At the agents as well. Talking about agents, most Africans are the agents to these other countries to these Middle Eastern countries. Because those ones, how do they know where to go and source for these people? How do they know how to communicate? So it boils back to we being Africans lying to ourselves as well. Hmm. Why will an influential person go to the village, take about 10 children and promise them a better life in the city and just transport them off to another country for, for slavery? And the parent back there will be believing that, oh, my child is doing well. My child is going to school. Meanwhile, the child is already sold into slavery. And yes, 
I agree that sometimes it's the agencies that take people. Another one is that people themselves volunteer for these things. Why? As I was saying, it's because of the economical situation in Africa. Look at people going through the um, Sahara Desert, going to Libya because they want to cross to Europe. These are people that are already tired of the situation. They want better lives for themselves. They are leaving their families behind. They are leaving their friends behind in, to pursue a better future, looking for greener pastures out there. Look at what is happening in Libya right now. Modern day slavery. They're selling Africans, black Africans sure. off. Sure. There's sure. organ harvesting happening in Libya. Sure. And how many people are talking about this? How many sure. people are talking about this? Our government is not talking about this. Our government is not helping us out with this. There was a time in Libya that it was so, so bad that Africans were begging Nigerians were begging. The government didn't do anything. If you remember very well, um, Samuel Eto yeah. sponsored a flight to Libya to go and take Cameroonians because yeah. the government was yeah. not responding. Yeah. Just like what we were saying yesterday, because people know that the African government will not protect its citizens, that is why they can do anything. Yes. Yes. That is why they can do yes. anything. Okay, I'm posting the link. I'm posting the link in the comment section. Anybody that wants to join us and contribute to this, and click um, the I link. saw Godemaya. I'm sure he would have so many things to say on this. Godemaya, join us and let's discuss this. <laughs> oh my God. Africa, Africa, we really need to stand up for ourselves. Honestly, we need to stand up. We need to wake up. We need to wake up and effect positive change into our system. Because what exactly are people talking about when they say they're looking for greener pastures? It's just the basics. It's just the basics. Good education, you know. 24 hours light, you know, good food on the table. A lot of people are not over the top. Oh, I want to buy a Bentley. I want to, they're not even thinking about that when, when they're saying greener pastures. They're just thinking, how can I feed my family? How can I, you know, eat three square meals? These are basic things that I believe that our government can provide for us, but have decided not to do. 24 hours late. How difficult is that? We have water everywhere. Waste products. Waste product can be can generate electricity. Hmm. We have so much waste product in, in Nigeria. Instead of just trashing these things, why can't you convert it into electricity? We have petroleum. Why can't they convert this to electricity? We have different sources, but they just don't want to do it. And because the government is not doing anything for its citizens, the citizens are being put in a situation where they are being compromised. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Irawa. Yes, we've placed the link. We put the link in the comment section. You can click the link and join us. If you want to discuss about this topic, just click the link. I'm posting the link again. Okay, so I was watching this stuff about one of one of the recruitment agencies in Lebanon. Hello. I think we just lost her. Okay, I was saying that I was watching this um, video about a guy, a recruitment agency in Lebanon. And this guy, he recruits Africans, just Africans. And then he was comparing Kenyan girls with Ghanaian girls. He said, oh, Ghanaian 
adults are harder workers, they are stronger, things like that. And they were asking him, okay, what are the human rights here? Are there any human rights in Lebanon? You as an agency, are you following up the are you following up the livelihood? Are you following up the life of these employees after they're being employed? And you know what he said? He said there is no human rights here. It doesn't apply here, maybe in Europe. And then he said that he feels that he's doing a favor to both the to both himself and to Africans. Um, someone said there are two sides to this, the supply side and the demand side. Until Africa improves economically, I am afraid no amount of legislation will change it. <laughs> Are you single? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. It's a two-way thing. It's both demand and supply. If there is no demand for it, there will be no supply. And if there is no supply, the demand would will die down. As I was saying, the Kenyan government banned this some years ago, 2012. And then 2017, they raised the ban against Africans going to the Middle East to work. I don't know what happened, but... I don't know what happened to IOS network, maybe. Let me check. <laughs> We're talking about modern day slavery. People are asking, am I single? No, I am not. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yes. So, who is going to join us today? And then if you check, okay, let's continue. I think I will join us later. Maybe something is wrong with our internet. If you... If you've watched some videos on YouTube and some interviews about made in hell, made in hell, you would really see how these people are being treated in the Middle East. They are not treated as human beings. They are not even treated as animals. They are treated way less than animals. How can you tell someone to be working for 18 hours out of 24 hours in a day? These people go with the mentality that they will be paid. And then when they get there, they work extra hours without pay or with very little pay. Apart from that, a lot of these girls are abused. Domestic violence and rape. There are several cases whereby some, some of the maids have reported that, oh, I say an internet issue. They've reported that their masters are abusing them. Their masters are raping them. What kind of thing is this? If you want someone to work with you, you should look at, you should look at the person like a human being, like yourself. If you cannot work that much hours, why would you want another human being to work that much? But really, I think everything still boils back to the fact that in Africa, we cannot even get the basic things. We cannot get the basic things like light, 24 hours light, clean water, basic education. These things are not there. These things are not there. So imagine if these things are not there, of course people are going to look for better, better opportunities. 
Wait, can you guys hear me? Or not? Can you please tell me in the comment section if you can hear me? Because I'm, I've been talking, but I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, so it was your internet that wasn't good, Emre. Okay, so now how can we solve this issue? How can we solve this issue of modern slavery? I think the first thing is for African leaders to put the basics in place. Because if I have enough in my house, why would I want to steal from another person? Why would I want to go somewhere else to work as a maid? If I have enough to eat in my house, if I have, if I can go to work and earn enough, if I can go out, work with my energy and make money in my own country, why would I want to enslave myself in another country? So yes, these are the problems we're facing in Africa and every single day, every single day, our sisters, our mothers are still going to these Middle Eastern countries to work as maids and be enslaved. This is really, really sad. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to calm down because this is really making my 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 blood boil because I just take these people like I know them as long as they're Africans, they are my sisters. But I don't understand why the government will not do anything about it. I was talking about the case of the Kenyan lady, um, Mary, that died, that she was working in Jordan for ten years, uh, for ten months thereabouts. And she had four children and she died from gas explosion and maltreatment from her employers. Now there is a lady in the there's a lady in the um in the Kenyan parliament that is fighting for women's rights, that is fighting against this, that is fighting against Kenyans going to Middle Eastern countries as maids. But no other person in the parliament is helping her. No other person is supporting her. This is like a drug cartel. They are all involved in it. It's like a ring. Like someone mentioned earlier, it's a supply, it's a demand and supply chain. And that is why a lot of African leaders are, are not talking about it. A lot of African leaders are not doing anything to solve it. The, um, African Union is not doing anything to solve this. It's because they are all in it together. So now, if the government cannot do so much about it, what can we as individuals, what, as, what can we as Africans do to solve this problem? First of all, for Africans, we should try to be creative and make a livelihood for ourselves. Because if you wait for the government to help you, if you wait for the government to support you, you will not get it. So the first thing is to try to be self-sufficient, to try to make money for yourself. And when you do that, you employ others also. When you see people, when you see people that need help, help them. These are your brothers, these are your sisters. Don't just look away that, oh, I don't know this person, so I cannot help. That same person will be so frustrated and will go through a recruitment agency to Middle East. Aya is back, let me join her. Hi. I cannot hear you. No? I can't hear you still. What is wrong with your internet today? <laughs> Nigerian internet. 
I don't know what is wrong. Let me try to connect you again. I cannot hear. Anyway, your TV is asking, Evan, what's your views on why the African economy and GDP is being so low in comparison to white and Asian countries? And how can we raise our GDP without foreign investments? Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. I think the headphone wasn't connecting. Yep. Your internet is so bad. Okay. Thank, thank you, our leaders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was just reading a comment from Irao TV, and he was saying that, Eben, what's your view on why the African economy and GDP is being so low in comparison to white and Asian countries? And how can we raise our GDP without foreign investments? Mm. Mm. In my opinion, when you compare African e economy and other economies like the white and the Asians that you're talking about, I would not say it is low in total. Nigerian economy and GDP is one of the first 20. Our GDP is high, but our economies are not okay. This is because of the mismanagement of resources. In Nigeria, for example, do you know how many billions, how many trillions are being embezzled on a daily basis? Billions of Naira, billions of, of dollars are being embezzled daily. And all this money is going into the pockets of people. And then they're sending this money to, to banks abroad. Yeah. Please so banks. our GDP is not low. Please banks. It yeah. is just that just a small fragment of people in the society are embezzling the money. And how can we raise our GDP without foreign investments? Hello, I feel please. like let me touch, let me touch on that. How can we let me touch on the second part? How can we raise our GDP without foreign investment? Like Ebu said, we can do without foreign investment. To be honest, with the with our capacity, not just money wise, but also human resource wise. For example, people in Nigeria. They are extremely hardworking, and I'm sure that in other parts of Africa we have extremely hardworking people. If people are not naturally hardworking, then the issue of modern slavery will not even be a topic. People want to work; they want to earn a substantial living, and this is because they are not getting it in their own country. That's why they're trying to go out there. So I feel like we don't really, really need foreign investment, but we keep having to go and get it because the money that we have is being stored away. And as individual citizens of our country, we cannot access those funds. So they're just going to tell us that we don't have enough and we have to go and borrow. This is like an, an uncle that you know is rich, but we'll, when you always ask the uncle for money, the uncle will always tell you, I don't have enough, I don't have much, you know. Maybe we can try to borrow from the bank or you can talk to your other uncles. Am I the only one? This is the kind of leaders that we have. We have this money, but they want it for themselves. So that selfishness till it is eradicated from our mindset, from their mindset, we're going to keep needing, hmm. needing foreign investment. We would have no choice than to, because even as an African entrepreneur, for example, you want to establish a, a company or something like that. How many African investors are available? How many African angel investors are available that you can talk to and that will understand your vision? 
Now, this is the problem. As a, a small business owner, you want to, you really want to develop something, a product in your country. But how many black investors would you find that would support your dream? Very few or none. And by the time you look out there to say, okay, let me reach out to maybe an European investor or an Asian investor, they start giving you terms and conditions that will hurt, that would hurt your own people, but but you might be left with no choice because you really want your dream to come true and your own fellow Africans will not support you. So if they start giving you conditions like, okay, if we are going to give you this amount of money, this is what you have to do, this is the thing you're going to do to your own people, you're just going to be like, okay, fine, no problem. So please, black investor, if any you know, African investor is watching, look at your surroundings, look at entrepreneurs trying to come up with an application, trying to come up with a business, try to look into these businesses and fund them and see how we can benefit ourselves as Africans. You know, the thing is, sometimes they don't even help you, the angel investors, but they still go ahead to even crush your 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 dream. They Which take the important. idea because the idea. they know they have the resources. Exactly. There are, there are a lot of intelligent people in Africa. There are a lot of brilliant people in Africa that are coming up with different things, different innovations. But when they want to implement these innovations, their ideas are actually being snatched away or being cut off. And that's why we're experiencing brain drain in Africa. A lot of people prefer to go abroad to work because they believe that their intelligence and their skills will be much appreciated there. And when they come up with ideas and innovations, people will support it or it will, it will, it will develop. It would develop and they would not give credit that it was by an African. Yeah. Because all the financial resources is being supplied by another country, by another like race entirely. So they would, I'm sure there are a lot of things that Africans have invented, a lot of, you know, amazing things, but that they do not have credit for. And they sign these things, you know, they sign these things that, yes, I will just go there, do this thing, but my name will not be there because on their own, they cannot stand. Hmm. So our government is not standing for us. And individuals in our continent that say they are billionaires, we do not feel their impact. This is really sad. You know, we're talking yesterday about the refinery system in Nigeria. Even though Nigeria has a lot of money, the manpower is there for people who can work in these refineries, but there is none. Yeah. But there yeah. is none. Because even the rich people are not investing into the economy. True. And that's the number one problem. If your own person cannot invest into the economy, how is the economy going to boom? How is it going to progress? Exactly. What other questions do you have, guys? Keep them rolling in. Let's see. Let's see coming in. I know, right? This we has to be a long way. A very, 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 very long way. And if you're watching, if you're watching, uh, um, I would say like the personal level, if you're to employ someone for um, labor or something, make sure it's someone that is of age, you know, so that you don't constitute a nuisance into society by encouraging child abuse. Child labor. Yeah. Child labor. So, because a lot of people just, you know, they just want the money. They just want cheap labor. So it is easier and it's more convenient to have house help. Because we're saying charity begins at home and change starts with us. So as much as we're talking about Lebanon, Dubai, all these Middle Eastern countries still taking black people out there for slavery, even within our communities, 
let us try our best you know in nigeria in kenya in south africa in you know ghana gambia anywhere you are when you are taking in a domestic star make sure the child or i, I mean make sure the person is of age at least 18 years old and that you treat them well also like and a human being well, exactly and that you treat them well I'm not saying be friends with everybody, but that human, um, let that empathy be there. Let that empathy be there. Let it be like, oh, this is another human being to another human being, you know? Because some people beat these staffs. Some people beat these people, you know? The ones that are not sexually abused, they are being um, physically abused, like beating, you know? um taking a, a hot iron and, and putting it on their backs you know very terrible things that it, you'll be wondering that it is uh, an african to an african hmm. so as much as we're saying don't do this to us we should also advocate i'm also advocating don't do this to your brother don't do this to your sister we are all one Hmm. We are all one. I think I saw a comment like that, like, we are all one. Yes, we are all one. You know, about this domestic abuse, I just remembered um, in Saudi Arabia, one of the workers, the maids, was complaining that the workload is too much. Mm -hmm. And then this family nailed her with 24 heated nails. What? Pierce your hands with 24 heated nails. And nothing happened. Nothing was done to them. Hmm. So there, like I said, there are a lot of untold stories, a lot of untold stories about modern day slavery. Slavery happened years ago, but till today it has not been abolished. It has just been abolished on paper. Yes. Just officially, it has been aborted officially because people are saying human rights and things like that. But that's just official. When it comes to practices, we still have slavery. Slavery is still very much active. And even the one that is not physical slavery, there is mental slavery also. Oh, yeah. The one Bob Marley talked about years ago. Yes, so let's talk about mental slavery also. You know, oh, okay, that's it. yes, mental slavery, a lot of people, now I'm talking about Africans, because yes. of the way we grew up and media influence and all that, some of us still have this mentality that we're lower. That white that people, people are better. People, that Just, white people are better than us. Because of the things we see on media, advertisements, and things like that, we still have the mentality that black skin is ugly, that the beauty standard is white skin. We still have this mentality that white people are the best, white people are more intelligent. And then all the things that we've been fed, we've been fed with through history, that black people are monkeys, black people have low IQ, things like that, are still in us and don't deny this it might not be in your consciousness it's might it will be in your subconsciousness because when you see someone else that is not of your race and you treat them better than yourself better than your african brother and sister then you are a then mental you have a slave. yeah then, then you're a mental you have a slave. yeah yeah then yes. you're a slave also very true, very true. You see instances of people, maybe they're queued up in a place, in their own homeland, queued up in a place, and they want to buy something, for example, and then a white person comes in, and they just tell them, you come, 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 you can just pack, go and do what you want to do, while black, black people are on the queue. Hmm. And the crazy part is, even if the one calling the person to come doesn't know better, the other black people on the queue 
do not re react. Hmm. Now that is the problem. If, for example, I don't know better, you should know better to help me. But all of them on the line would not say anything. They would just say, oh, let, just let him go. Just let him. But if it's their black person that, for example, just walks, hey, you will not hear anything again. Why did you allow him to go? Why did you allow him to go? It's a white person. I don't know whether you saw that video of um in Ghana actually of yeah. the white lady that did not want to collect the sanitizer. And yeah. I'm like, a lot of people were just like in the comments that you have given these people so much privilege in the past that it's going to be so difficult for them to now feel like they have to follow your orders. Of course, she mm -hmm. you knows hand sanitizer is important because of the coronavirus issue. Did we lost Ayo again? <laughs> the internet, oh my God. Your internet is really bad. Really, really. <laughs> okay. So it was more, it was more of um, a situation of authority she could she just felt like i cannot take orders from a black that was the issue hmm. meanwhile it is not a matter of order or not taking order it was a matter of this is life and death we're talking about the coronavirus that is beyond everybody just do the needful but she just had had the feeling that no i'm better than you you cannot tell me what to do even though it is the right thing to do Yes, speaking of um, mental slavery, what we are being taught as Africans, you know, one thing we have to do is to improve our educational system also. We really have to educate ourselves. Africans we really have to educate ourselves. And this is, I'm not talking about just formal education that you are being taught in schools only. Even informal education. Ayo. Is off again. Even in formal education, we have to educate our minds as Africans. Because in school, we are not being taught about our, our history. And mind you, when I say African history, I'm not talking about slavery. A lot of people get it so wrong. African history is not all about slavery. We did a video about that. African history is not all about slavery. Slavery was an interruption of African history. How many schools teach African history? When a person grows up and doesn't know his history, doesn't know her history, that person is not formed. And, and when you're deformed, when you're not informed, you're deformed. We don't learn about our history in school. We don't learn about self-esteem then we go on tv to tv channels the only things we see are white movies white news white everything adverts of white creams telling you to bleach your body so that you can be beautiful and all this starts creating an image in our heads all this starts making us mental slaves. And then when we go out there, we start behaving somehow because we are not informed. So I'm saying that Africans should start getting educated. And when I say educated, it's not about learning mathematics or biology or chemistry. It's about learning our history and learning that we're human beings and learning self-worth. We should treat everyone equal. And when I say equal, no other person should be placed above you. Don't place anybody above you. Nobody is above you. We are all equal. And you should treat everybody like that. Williams Godwill says, the racism is so much that 
even the white people I work with only talk about the COVID-19 in Africa, why it is so much in their country. Our media are also a problem in Africa. I totally agree with you. You know, when we started this channel, that was the problem we were facing, that we're tired of the media. The way the media portrays Africa is always in a terrible light. The way the media portrays Africans is always terrible. They portray Africans as poor, wretched, with diseases, things like that. And we thought it's high time we started showing positive light about Africa. You know, it's so sad that the media is so controlled that everything bad is about Africa and everything good is, is about Europe or Western countries. And this is not true. Okay, there are slums in Africa. Agreed. But there are also slums in, in Europe. There are also slums in America. There are slums in developed countries. There are, there are underdeveloped things in even developed countries. But the media would not show you this. But in Africa, there are good things happening in Africa. There are entrepreneurs in Africa. There are people doing amazing things in Africa and developing Africa. But the media will never show this. It will never show this. Enough is enough. Really, enough is enough. Okay, yeah. I, uh... okay I'm back again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> My internet today is just really crazy. But yeah, I was listening to what Evan was saying about um, so many amazing things actually happening in Africa and people are not really talking about it. What I would say is, People are being bombarded more with the goodness of Europe, of America, and are being misinformed about the goodness of Africa. They, and they are not being bombarded with how awesome Africa is. When the media portrays Africa, oh, they are living in heart. Oh, Africans, look at all this donation, um, NGOs. It's always one child looking so terrible, you know, that has an eating. And they tell you that most Africans live below a dollar. And they keep saying these things, and they keep saying these things, and they keep saying these things. And when you're growing up and you're a child, you keep hearing these things. That is why a lot of white people, this is also their mentality. Even though they've not been to Africa, what is on the net? about Africa is that they are poor. Hmm. And when we watch TV, when we watch the news, when we watch movies, all we see is, oh, skyscrapers. Oh my God, look at the clean cities. So this is the reason why people also sometimes volunteer themselves to actually undergo terrible conditions by going through the Sahara Desert, to get to, to 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 Libya and then into maybe Morocco and then to to where's the final destination they're usually heading to Italy, Italy. Spain, 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 exactly. So the media is showing that this place is amazing, it's so cool, you know, nice weather, nice everything. So they just want to go, 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 go. Huh? Meanwhile, when we see how they portray us, instead of us to create a counter reaction like when you say Africa is poor, you go out there. And that is the, one of the reasons why we started this channel. And I'm sure all the African YouTubers trying to, you know, put Africa in a positive light because we are already in a very positive light, but it's not really evident on media. I remember, Ebo, you remember when we were back in Turkey and we would get the craziest questions. The craziest question, and you would wonder if people have Google on their phones or not, because we would hear like very, start to say very ridiculous questions, like how did you get here? Uh, um, do they have clothes they have in, Africa? in Africa? Is and there meat in Africa? Then you have water? Meat? Because, because some of their NGOs there would go to them and tell them that, hey, African people, maybe for example, like now there's Ramadan um, 
Ramadan Karim to all our uh, Muslim viewers. So they will tell them that now um, Ramadan is coming, these people, they don't have meat, you know. So give money to us and we will take it there. And these people too, in some of them are actually naive and they will feel that, oh, it's true, these people don't have meat. Let me give money to them. So when they see you as a black person eating meat, they wonder, oh, so you know me. How come you know me? Oh, you're wearing clothes. But I heard you guys don't have clothes because just the other day, for example, I gave money to an NGO because they said African people don't have clothes. Do you understand? So some of them are truly ignorant and some of them truly just feel that they are better. Mm -hmm. <sighs> You're right, it's one hour already. <laughs> and I think, I don't know, when it comes to AIDS, for example, I think Africans, um, we should limit, I think one of the, because we, we should not just be talking about problems, we should also talk about possible solutions. And when I say possible solutions, simple positive solutions that even we as individuals can take because they said um for example a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one single step mm -hmm. so for us to get far we have to you know a, a day at a time one step at a time and we keep moving forward by god's grace so let us as africans limit the the aid that we are collecting you know the the so-called they're bringing clothes now you know i i was looking at the video and someone was saying that please clothes coming in from china very soon africans don't take it because they are gonna be you know it's from uh, patients that were treated with from coronavirus that use those blankets so please please do not use do not accept used things from mm -hmm. From, from China, from other countries. Let us just limit, you know, our take, 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 take. Let us start seeing how we can give back to our community, how we can give back to ourselves, how we can be independent. I think for so long, African, Africa as, in, as a continent, we, we have relied so much on taking and taking and taking and taking. And when people know that you are all about taking and taking and taking, they would present you with whatever useless agenda that they have because they know you don't have an option. You you just want to take as far as it's going to benefit you. Yeah. Anyway, I think we've come to the end of this um, live video for today. Also, um, our super chats. So there's this stuff known as Super Chat that is active. If you guys want to support us, you can use Super Chat. Do you, do you guys know what it is? Super Chat is like um, during life, you can send comments and you can support us by using the Super Chat. There's like a dollar sign close to the comment. And you guys can support us, support our vision to make Africa better, to shed positive lights on Africa. And yes, share our videos, tell your friends about it because we are the only ones that have each other. Tell them about it and let us continue to spread the positive image about Africa to the world. Yeah, exactly. So, so that we can really er eradicate the mental slavery which is which is still being you know i don't know experience by most people but they really do not know you know mm -hmm. a lot of people are suffering from this but they really do not know so please and information the right information will actually break us through. because if we know better we will be able to tell better to our neighbors our children children's children would have greater information because we knew better. So it really, really starts with us. There was a video Evo just posted today talking about the black feet and whether it is racist or not. You should go and check out that video as well and really, really see how these things are being like put into children's mind to believe that it is just normal. So we have seen that things are not just normal. 
discrimination is normal. Discrimination is not normal. No matter what form it, form it comes in. So, guys, we, we, there's so much to say about this. Just go in the comment section, you know, air out your views, make it your platform to also inform and educate other people. We really appreciate you guys. We love you so much. Guys, take care and see you again. Check our channel every day. There's something always new for you. Subscribe, send um, the links to your friends. Let them also join in. This is a discussion for everybody. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Peace out. <laughs> Have a great day and peace out.